This video is about our recent paper on evaluating semi-supervised learning algorithms. What should we do when we're training a classifier but we only have a few labels? Is this a good decision boundary between the two classes? Or maybe this one? Or how about this one? Now what if we also have access to unlabeled data? Semi-supervised learning methods leverage unlabeled data to learn a better classifier. These approaches have recently had a series of successes in performing reliable classification even when labeled data is scarce. Typically, these methods are evaluated like so. First, we take a common labeled data set, and we treat most of the data points as unlabeled. Then we train one classifier on only the labeled data, and another classifier using the labeled and unlabeled data with semi-supervised learning. The semi-supervised learning technique is effective if it achieves higher accuracy. In our paper, we argue that this method of benchmarking fails to reflect many real-world settings. As a first step, we re-implemented various state-of-the-art semi-supervised learning algorithms and tested them on CIFAR-10 with 4,000 labels and SVHN with 1,000 labels. Variability in the underlying model and other implementation details can prevent direct comparison between different methods, so we created a unified framework for all of the algorithms. We used 1,000 rounds of automatic hyperparameter tuning for every method, including the fully supervised baseline. The first thing we noticed was that the gap between semi-supervised learning methods and the corresponding fully supervised baseline was smaller than generally reported. This is likely because we used the same budget for tuning hyperparameters for the semi-supervised learning methods and the baseline. Another baseline to compare semi-supervised learning against is transfer learning, which can obtain good performance on small labeled datasets by pre-training a model on a large related dataset. We found that basic transfer learning from ImageNet to CIFAR-10 outperformed the best semi-supervised learning method we studied, even when we removed the classes from ImageNet, which were similar to CIFAR-10 classes. Many papers only report semi-supervised learning results for one particular amount of labeled data. We evaluated each approach with varying amounts of labeled data and found a surprising variability in the performance of each method based on the number of labels available. Another issue with the way these algorithms are typically evaluated is that treating part of the labeled data set as unlabeled results in a perfect matching between the classes in the labeled and unlabeled data. In some real-world scenarios, we can't guarantee that the labeled data has the exact same classes as the unlabeled data. To simulate this, we varied the amount of mismatch between classes in the labeled and unlabeled data and found the surprising result that performance of semi-supervised learning algorithms can actually become worse than the fully supervised baseline when there's a class mismatch. Further discussion of these results and additional observations are available in our paper. 